Thanks John, good morning. Well another cool start to the day, although it looks like it's going to warm up fairly quickly. Clear skies, westerly winds and still small waves for the board riders. Swell direction still basically southeast. Waves are quite small, up to one metre at most of the open beaches in town. The tide a little low at the moment. Conditions will improve with the incoming tide over the next two or three hours. And then better waves again later this afternoon with the outgoing tide. Around high tide, the swell's a little bit too small for the board riders and the waves will be at around half tide coming in and half tide going out. With the offshore winds remaining, conditions are nice and smooth and glassy and the waves holding their shape reasonably well. If you'd like to go for a swim this morning, all of our city beaches are quite safe, although we do have a rather constant problem now at some of our city beaches with water pollution and with southerly swell over the last week or so. I'm afraid Dixon Park and Merriweather are still displaying signs serve closed, unsafe water quality. And taking a look at the weather this morning, complex low pressure systems, one in the Bight and one to the south of Tasmania, continue this westerly airstream across New South Wales. Over the weekend, the likelihood is that winds will turn southerly later in the weekend and possibly produce a few showers along the coast. Today, though, the forecast reads a strong wind warning current south of Port Stephens for northwest to westerly winds, strengthening to 20 to 30 knots by late morning. That's 40 to 60 kilometres per hour. A dry, cool day with lengthy sunny periods and seas rising moderate to rough offshore on a low swell. Also expecting some morning fog patches in the inland areas. Newcastle expecting a warm day, a top of 19 degrees, 18 degrees for Scone. Low tide, 6.31 this morning, 0.5 of a metre. High tide will be at 12.37 this afternoon, 1.3 metres. And the outlook for tomorrow, Saturday, dry conditions and sunny. Well that's the story, another warm day, 19 degrees for Newcastle, 18 degrees for Scone. For the board riders, waves around 1 metre, westerly winds to continue and the possibility of southerly winds and showers later in the weekend. Have a great day and a great weekend. We'll be back on Monday morning. and drawn the rest. This team will play 13 English schoolboy sides and the Welsh schools team as well. Coach Doherty says Wales and Yorkshire will be the hardest teams to beat, but he's confident. The uh, chances are excellent. The, I feel that the uh, team is a well-balanced side, both in, uh, in the batting and the bowling department, and uh, we feel that they are uh, got the chances of doing extremely well.
a big the gallery of well wishes, handlers and the media gathered we at Westerns uh, to witness the way in her first to step on the scales was Wee Willie White from Newcastle, who is fighting Ducky Dennis from Bathurst for the vacant New South Wales man and weight title. White weighed in a kilo underweight at 52.8 kilos, and Dennis was exactly the same weight, 52.8. These two have met four times, with White winning twice, Actually, Dennis once, and one draw. Then it was Basil Gura who is fighting Peter Basil Hemsel Gura from Western South Australia Wales, for the Australian Cruiserweight Kickboxing Championship. Gura was a half a kilo under at 82.5, and Hemsel three under at 80 kilos. Both fighters are undefeated after six fights each. Like Greg Cairns was under the limit for his welterweight bout Greg's with WA Zenian Goronsky, but fight. the boy from the West was nearly three kilograms overweight and will have a monumental task in making the weight. It should be a great night's entertainment. Expected decisions. Mr. Booth September. says he'll have to go well, back to the uh, drawing just board on with the preparations the for the forthcoming state budget. People, uh, Although he had uh, allowed for a wage increase in the state's submission for funds at last week's Premier's consulted. conference, he says the New so South Wales movement, allotment uh, fell well short that, of what think, he had but, asked for. Uh, as a result of the Loan Council and Premier's conference held over the, the last few days, we in New South Wales didn't get as much as uh, we'd asked for, about $245 million short. and. Well, uh, it just depends on what the decision the is. The and most people are uh, working towards the board of the problems. Although he had allowed for a wage problem, increase in the state's submission for funds at last week's so that any Premier's movement, conference, uh, he says the New South that, Wales think, allotment in, uh, fell well short well. of what he had asked for. As a result of the Loan Council and Premier's conference held over the, the last few days, we in New South Wales didn't get as much as uh, we'd asked for, about $245 million short. And uh, I think this uh, is going to make it necessary uh, for the government to go back and have a look at the priorities uh, and that have been submitted uh, by each in department. The only ways that uh, we can adjust our budget are either increasing taxes, increasing charges or reducing the services to the community. So it's a very narrow field and hopefully uh, when we come down with our budget uh, in the latter part of September, uh, we won't have to increase drastically our, our taxes and charges, but of course this is, uh, a, could be a possibility uh, depending upon uh, our review as far as our budget strategy is concerned. What do you anticipate the deficit will be this year for the State Government? Well, it's very difficult to, uh, to put a figure on it at this stage because of what happened at Loan Council as late as the last few days. But our budget this year was a deficit of 39.5 million and I think within the next week we'll be able to announce that we've come in pretty well on target. says it couldn't have been done without Captain, the help of been the response from the collectors. We've had a great day today. We estimate that 2,000 door knockers actually went out on the door knock in Newcastle. That would mean that every home has been approached with regard to the Red Shield appeal. Obviously, because it's been such a lovely day, a lot of people have been away. And so we will really be needing people who haven't been able to donate at the door. Um, we'll be needing them to, to post their donations into us.
This is low tide Throsby Creek at Islington this morning. It reveals a huge rubbish and mud dump. Two front end loaders and about six workmen are clearing the creek today, but their efforts are being hampered by the depth of mud. Local residents are sick of the ugly sight and the disgusting smell. They're calling for the creek to be draglined clear. One of those people is Eric Lockett, the Assistant Secretary of the Islington Bowling Club. The problem's been going on for 10 years, but the last three years it's been shocking, the smell. Through the summer months in this club we've had to lock the doors and windows to keep the smell out and the fans are on. It's all a cost of electricity to the club. What sort of things have been thrown into the creek in your time? Well, you can have a look today. There's drums, there's wire mesh, there's soil timber. At different times on low tide we've had the uh, problem of dead dogs and cats laying on the mud bank which isn't very uh, nice with the smell going over the green, especially now we've got lady bowlers in the club. Thirty-two-year-old Margaret Ann Burton and thirty-nine-year-old Ronald Frank Burke appeared before Magistrate Mr Peter Hoban, charged with conspiring to kill thirty-three-year-old Peter Charles Burton. It's alleged the offence took place in Newcastle sometime between the 1st of January and the 31st of March. The court was told that Burton was administered with Mogadon to make him sleep before the two discussed ways of killing him. It was pointed out, however, that despite the fact Burton has been missing from his Woodbury home for five weeks, there is no evidence to suggest that he is dead. Mrs Burton left the court with relatives this afternoon after being released on a $10,000 conditional bail. She must live at her father's Mayfield home and report to police each day until the case reopens in Newcastle on August 2nd. The magistrate, Mr Hoban, said he was allowing Mrs Burton bail despite the seriousness of the charge because she had two children to look after and the stabling influence of a supportive family. Burke left the court handcuffed and was taken by police to make them jail. His application for bail was refused at the request of the police prosecutor, who told the court that there was nothing to keep him in the area. He was unemployed and prior to being charged, lived in a warm hotel. Five Believes weeks they have ago, seen the Mrs. Burton man. contacted police Peter Burton claiming her husband was missing. She told them that on May the 29th, a slim he built, left the family fed... home in Kookaburra Parade, Woodbury, saying he was going to buy a new car. The 1964 Holden sedan Mrs Burton said he took with him was later found in a car park at the Newcastle College of Advanced Education. Police now fear that Burton is dead and are searching large areas of bushland around Newcastle for a body. The Shire engineer, Mr Walbridge, says the Lands Department has failed to comply with the normal requirements for subdividing land. He says it's happened on five occasions in the Lemon Tree Peninsula, including the subdivision of land for the RSL site at Tanilba Bay, the nearby primary school development and the sailing club. On all occasions, the Lands Department was required to submit a development application to the Council. It didn't. The matter came to a head with the subdivision of land for oyster growers at Lemon Tree Passage. They've asked the council to provide the roads. Well, normally if somebody wants to subdivide, they would lodge a development application to council, and when the council considers that, it would imply or apply conditions uh, to the consent, such as it would require the developer to construct roads and the drainage for that subdivision. So in these particular cases it hasn't happened and the onus is now back on the council to pay for those? Well, we're a little bit uncertain as to, um, as to why uh, the Lands Department has proceeded the way it has. I don't know why they have uh, you know, almost a double standard for some subdivisions as a part of the others. Uh, they certainly know the procedure and they have in fact followed it in you know, a large number of residential type subdivisions. But not in this one? No, not in that one. Fine has had nine fights, losing the first two and winning the next. 
seven. Why were those fights on knockout? So it's no wonder the youngster from Argentina is thrilled to make it in the New South okay. Wales for the Australian title. Yeah, it's real good there. Yeah. Uh, didn't think I'd ever get this high, you know. First started, um, yeah, it's terrific. Uh, I'm really looking forward to going. And what's your future after the Australian titles, if you do well? Uh, hopefully, yeah, any games. If go any good in that, yeah. Just see what comes out of the Australian title first. And of course, then the big one, 1984, the Olympic Games. Yeah, you can always be hopeful, though. as well as many major retail outlets. The decision to introduce the new tariff, which represents a possible $2 million loss in revenue, comes at a time when the County Council can least afford it. Only this year, $7 million was slashed from the capital goods budget. So why has the Council decided to introduce the tariff for general supply customers? We are the only County Council of the four major councils which do not provide a demand type tariff for its large commercial customers. But it could mean a big revenue loss. Well, the council anticipates uh, in a, the maximum worst situation would be somewhere in the order of $2 million a year in lost revenue. But uh, the council considers this is worthwhile uh, to bring itself into parity with the other councils and offer tariffs which are equitable to all its consumers. Uh, the other factor in relation to this year is that uh, we are experiencing some growth and uh, therefore anticipate it may not be as big a burden as you might imagine. Cricket caging for the right youth of the Newcastle Hunter Building region. Society and representative Ian Nelms handed over a cheque for five and a half thousand in. dollars to the director Except of the Newcastle the University Convocation Foundation, Brian Yelp. Uh, the Building Society is part of the Cooperative Community Advancement Society, be very which wishes to see the five and a half thousand dollars directed to the I'm University sure Cricket Club. Uh, Cricket seeking to have a, White, uh, a seeking to gathering, have a the club would be responsible as early as next <laughs> season for, for initiating a series of cricket today. coaching clinics and for I'm sure students. by the time the, the last dollar is spent The pensioners from the Hunter region gather to make their grievances known. They say they appreciate the advances both the federal and state governments are making in services for the pensioners, but they say they just aren't enough. What they want is more money. We feel that uh, if the pension was uh, risen to a reasonable amount, we wouldn't have to worry about concessions. Uh, if uh, we were getting the minimum average wage, uh, well, you know, uh, people would be a lot better off, the economy would be better off because pensioners can spend their money. The state and federal members for Newcastle, Mr Arthur Wade and Alderman Alan Morris, as well as Alderman John Manning from the Newcastle City Council and the Secretary of the Trades Hall, Mr Peter Barrick, addressed the 300 strong crowd and answered questions. National we Secretary of the Pensioners August Association, Mr Jim Priest, says what thing. many people we forget old, is that the elderly Ill. still have a lot to contribute to the community. Well, pensioners are not sick people. We feel that uh, when a person retires, uh, governments think, oh, well, they've finished paying their taxes and so forth, or not or everyone is doing that today because of the, the taxation system. But uh, they just look upon them as old people that have finished their working life, and that's that. We'd like to be able to prove to the government that uh, older people uh, are not finished, we have a lot of experience to give to the country and that we should be used for that experience. 